Hey YouTube! Uh, I think I'm going to talk about my C-section in this video. Um, I've been putting it off for a while. First because I couldn't and second because my story is like so different compared to most C-sections that if a scared woman came across my video and she's so nervous about a c-section and then she saw my story I wouldn't want to freak her out even more so first let me say that this stuff most likely will not happen to you like probably won't 99 percent won't um, it was just a series of events that just happened to fall step by step into each other and just it, it wasn't good but um I had to have my c-section because come on bird um Zayden was coming out face up when they're supposed to be face down and then their head's supposed to be like engaged like that but um he was face up which is possible to give birth it's just harder because their spine is against your spine and he was face first so he was gonna come out looking like this and the they discovered he was like that when I was seven centimeters dilated and they uh, could feel the baby and when she was feeling for him she couldn't feel his head the way it should have been and so she got an ultrasound machine in there and then called one doctor in after another and I'm just like why won't you tell me what's going on and then finally after this guy doctor who I've never seen before was like hand inside me and then hand on top of my belly with the ultrasound machine um, told me that what they're touching is his nose so they weren't feeling this with their fingers they were going like that and um, he just stood up and he's like you're gonna need a c-section hope you're okay with that and I was like okay great awesome because um, I'd already been in labor for two going on three days because the position he was in it was not letting me dilate um, so I was in labor for so long and they wouldn't admit me because I wasn't dilating to five I was stuck between three and four so I had already had the epidural before they told me that stuff um, but my epidural wasn't in great position it's um it's like it goes down your spine and then right at the bottom um the tube that's given the medicine went to the right so for you guys it's that way <laughs> and um so basically my right bot side of my spine was being numb all the way up to like my boob area down but my left side I could still move it I, it was tingly numb I, I couldn't feel it that well but I could still move it I could still feel things and um, I told my anesthesiologist that and she told me to lay on my left side for five minutes and then roll back and let the medicine drain and it did but I was like dude if it's not working how if like cuz you have to lay on your back in a c-section what's gonna happen and I was vomiting at the time because I guess it was nerves it was uh, this medicine they gave me it was a whole bunch of stuff and I just like so much was going on I couldn't even tell what all was happening so they get me in on the table and uh, hook me up whatnot and I was shivering like crazy they had to put uh, two hot blankets on me and usually they strap both your arms down to your side so that you don't move or something but I kept my one of my hands in like this and then my other arm was out with my IV in it and um, they did this they like cut my belly button a little bit to see if it hurt and I felt it and I was like okay why are they touching my belly button but I didn't tell them and that was kind of stupid of me and so they're like okay we're gonna start and so they started from uh, my left to right and it was like holy shit that hurts so oh, it's gone away oh my god that hurts so oh, it's going away and I was like dude 
I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to feel them cutting me open. The only thing you're supposed to feel is right at the end when they're pulling the baby out. And so I'm like talking to my anesthesiologist and I'm like, I can feel everything and it hurts. I feel them cutting me open. And she was like, uh, and didn't say anything, grabs a bunch of syringes and loads up my epidural with just as much medicine that they allowed to give a person, not just a young girl, but a person. And I could still feel it, like, hello, it's only working for the right side of my body, I don't know why you're loading me up with more. And she's like, okay, you just have to hang in there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And then my heart rate started going up, and um, she put this gas mask on me, didn't say what it was, she said it was some oxygen, but it would make me sleepy. And... I started moaning and groaning and one point might have screamed like this is all kind of in and out black and white because the medicine that she gave me on my gas mask I think it was to knock me out and she just didn't tell me that and um, so I would hear Gavin over my left shoulder and he's like telling me it's okay I think his hand was on my arm that was held out and just he sounded like he was almost crying because I was moaning so loud and it hurt and he's like you're almost there you're doing great I love you so much and then I'd pass out and wake up and he's still doing the same thing and then it felt like ages but really from start to the baby out it was only like five ten minutes and then I could hear Zayden's crying and then Gavin was crying and he's like he's out he's out you did it and then I passed out again and then I woke up and they put Zayden next to my left shoulder but he wasn't facing me so I couldn't even see his face and um, I believe they did that so that I wouldn't see how swollen his both his eyes and his upper lip were um, because there were but there was a lot of fluid in it from the way he was coming out he had so much pressure on him um, that they didn't want me freaking out and so I kissed the back of his head and then passed out again and um, when I was passed out and they're sewing me up, which takes about 20 minutes apparently, uh, Gavin was back in my labor and delivery room showing the family Zayden and everyone's crying and taking pictures and then I wake up for like 20 seconds and I'm back in the delivery room and it's my mom and dad at the foot of my bed I, like holding hands looking at me and then Gavin's on my left side of the bed and probably holding my hand like I can't remember any of it and I tried talking but it wouldn't come out and my dad's like don't worry about it you just need to rest right now just go back to sleep and I'm like hello I want to see my baby what's going on and this and that but I passed out again because of the medicine and then next thing I woke up which by the way Zayden was born at 107 a.m. they told me I needed a c-section like exactly at midnight I, I think um, 1230 actually so it took him like 30 minutes to come out and then the next time I woke up I was in ICU and no one was allowed around in there it was only me and the nurses taking care of me and apparently what happened was the c-section did not go as planned I had lost a lot of blood they couldn't suck it up fast enough Gavin said when they said that Zayden was almost here and he stood up to look over, he almost passed out because when they suck up the blood, it goes in this container and he said there was so much he couldn't believe it. And, um, and uh, so I lost a lot of blood. And then my mom, when I was in my labor and delivery room, was like, why is she breathing like that? And the doctors were like, she's not breathing any certain way, she's fine. And she's like, no, I think you need to check her out. So they get the stethoscope thing and listen to me this is all by details I've gotten from people I don't know any of this happened I was still passed out and um oh there's a bug um apparently my lungs were filling with fluid and I was really raspy like uh, like I, I don't know and um so they're like oh we need to take her to ICU you can't come, the dad can come when we come get him. And he's like, okay, and everyone started crying apparently because they were scared for me. 
So I wake up in ICU and the nurse is like, sorry to have to do this, but I have to manually, manually, like, I have to contract your uterus by hand because since you had a C-section and he didn't come out vaginally, um, I have to do it for you. And so they couldn't give me any more medication because I was already loaded up. Um, I was awake and could feel everything she was doing, but basically she was like pushing on my stomach. I don't know how she was doing it. I wasn't looking. I was screaming because she was right next to the cut and um, contracting your uterus hurts apparently when they do it by hand because they have to press so hard. Like I was just awful screaming stop what are you doing that hurts and she's like sorry can't do it i have to do this and i'm just like really lady you could be more compassionate but she did it for like five ten minutes and i was like looking over my shoulder at my heart monitor and it was blinking red because it was going so fast and i'm just like oh come on and the medicine was still in my system so i was in and out of it she's like Oh, you'll be out of here in 10 minutes. We got the fluid out. Don't know what they did. Um, you might need a blood transfusion if your blood uh, cells don't come up to the correct number. But until then, just about 10 more minutes and we'll take you up. And I'm like, okay, cool. And so I look at the clock and it's like 2 a.m. Then I fall asleep and wake up. It's half an hour later. And she's like, are you thirsty? And I was like, hell yeah, I am. And they would only give me like this much water. And I was like, dude, can I have more than that? And she's like, no, we can't give you any. Again, it's an annoying nurse. And they didn't want to give me too much water because um, if I drank too fast and because my body's going through a traumatic experience, I would have vomited. And the vomiting would have torn my stitches inside and out. But I was dying of thirst, fell back asleep, woke up. She comes in. She's like, oh, you'll be out of here in 10 minutes. It's already been like two hours later. So, apparently Gavin tried to ask to come down, and they're like, no, you can't go in ICU. And he's like, but the nurse just said, I can come down in a little bit. And they're like, nope, sorry. So, basically everyone's upstairs in labor and delivery, looking at Zayden, crying about me. And, um, at like 5 a.m., they're like, okay, your paperwork sorted out, you look good you can go back up so they roll me into the elevator I go up and then roll me back into my labor and delivery room and by that time at five in the morning it was just Gavin my mom and his mom that were there everyone else went home which is completely understandable um, and Gavin just would not leave my side like he was so worried about me and he was asking me how I was doing, and my mom, and all of them doing the same. And I was just like, honestly, I just want to see my kid. It's been six, almost six hours after his birth. Like, when am I going to see him? And then he was like in the corner of the room, and I was like, still in and out of it. I couldn't talk much. My throat hurt and all that. But uh, it's kind of cool of them, actually. They told me that no one held him the entire time. He had not been held by anyone but the nurses who took him out of my belly yet because they thought that I had deserved that after everything I went through. So they picked him up and put him in my arms, and I was the first one to be able to hold him. When usually C-section people, that's not how it is. It's usually the dad who holds him, then everyone else while the mom is in the getting sewn up and whatnot but um i was be able i was able to hold him first and it was just amazing afterwards um to hold him because apparently he had gone to NICU instead of icu obviously because it's for babies um and apparently he had fluid in his lungs because when the baby comes out of you it squeezes their lungs and gets all the liquid from the amniotic fluid out but because he wasn't squeezed that way he had fluid in his lungs also and had trouble breathing so it's just like nothing went the way it was supposed to and if I watch baby story baby's first day um, any kind of show on TLC 
like that, I almost want to cry because I'm so jealous on how well they went. Like, whether it's regular vaginal delivery or it's C-section. It's just, I didn't even get a normal C-section where I get to see Zayden over the curtain they put over you, where I get to hold him afterwards and cry with Gavin or anything. After that, I was rushed off to ICU. Like, nothing worked. And, uh, after, I can't even remember, like, holding, I can remember holding Zayden, but I think I passed out not too long after that, like, I don't know, it's really blurry, but they wouldn't let me out of bed for, like, two days after that, because, um, all the medication I was on, they thought I would not be able to walk or I'd pass out. Um, you have to wait like a day with a C-section anyways. I was super anemic and I was anemic up to a month afterwards. They just decided to let me suffer and um, let my blood build up slowly instead of giving me a transfusion. And um, it's not very good feeling anemic. You feel sick all the time. You are very pale, very tired all the time, so it was hard to take care of Zayden. Um, you can you can Google it. It's there's a lot of things that can go wrong with anemia, and um, it just sucked. Recovery was awful. Usually with C-sections, like um, another vlogger, young mommy, dear Taylor tragedy. She just had a C-section like not long ago and she's perfectly fine three weeks postpartum. It took me eight weeks when it's supposed to take six weeks max to feel better. For me, I, it was hard to uh, walk, to do things. I just was miserable, would cry if I missed my medication by half an hour. Just, it was awful. And not only did I have anemia, the day I came home from the hospital, I had a fever and they said if that happens I have to go back immediately to the ER and see what's going on and I was scared I was gonna have to get cut open again and I was just freaking out and they didn't know what was wrong but I had a UTI a uterine tract infection along with anemia and it's just one thing after another like I told you it was just Zayden not doing good and they were worried and then c-section both of us not doing good afterwards uh zayden had terrible jaundice and almost had to be rushed to a different hospital while i'm stuck in this one because i wasn't allowed to leave yet um i had anemia and all that like it's just awful and as much as i can complain about it and pretty much do whenever i tell people the story i'm just really glad that we both came out okay as we are right now um, I, I got, uh, stitches on the, uh, uh, no, staples on the outside. Some people get stitches, some people get glue, which I feel like Taylor Tragedy got glue by the look of her incision. You almost can't even see it. I got staples, and six days postpartum, I went in and got them removed. Um, I could shave, like, three weeks postpartum around there. This, the, it was totally sealed and healed. Um... Now, it was like this big at start. Now it's probably this big. And it's puffy. And one thing that sucks about C-section victims, and I do say victims because they suck, you still get pains in your scar. Um, it's not just me. My friend Ashley, who has a one-year-old son, also gets these pains. It's just shocking, almost pinching, stabbing. It's like pain you can't really describe except for if you have a scar. Because my dad has a really big one on his knee and still gets it 20 years later. And so I have to like push down on my scar and just wait till it stops. Um, it just happens at least once a day. It's still puffy. It's numb on my right side still, but I can feel my left side pretty well. I'll show you guys. Um, <laughs> and there's my scar. And this little 
bag I have is from C-sections where it goes like down and up and then down and up again. That for some reason happens with C-sections. Um, the way they tug on your belly to get the baby out I guess. And it really sucks because it's really hard to lose that belly. Because you can't work out fully and regularly because your muscles are cut. Whoops, sorry. So this I can feel pretty well. It gets numb right about the middle where this little from my underwear is. I get a little dense on it to over here. It's pretty numb. Um, but like I said, it's really hard on your body for C-sections in the beginning. I still get affected to it eight months later. Um, really sucks. I'm a young teen and I have the body of an 80 year old in the stomach and it really does a damper on your confidence. But my son's healthy and I love him to death. I'm pretty healthy. I still have stomach issues and um, eating issues and stuff like that since my pregnancy. But we're fine and I can't ask for any better. So if you have any questions, I probably left something out. And if I do, I'll just write a comment in the bottom. If you have any questions, just go ahead. I am not that TMI kind of person at all. Once you have a baby, there's no shyness at all. So thanks for listening to my story. Hope I answered questions and didn't freak you guys out too much at all. Like I said, my story was pretty gruesome and rare. Thank the Lord we're okay now. Bye.